George Jones is the king of tragedy, the man who tears your heart out with a song before sending you mad with his drinking. I can hardly bear the sight of lipstick. He could drive you to tears with his voice. He would drive to the off-license on a lawnmower. I love George Jones. I absolutely love George Jones. George Jones has had a wild life. Oh, my God. He has uh, been through more money than most people would ever make in 10 lifetimes. There's nothing one could do to damage a show business career that George Jones has not done. It's been a good year for the road. Of all our kings, George Jones is the one whose life really is like a damn good country song. The alarm bell should have rung with this one then. Well, in Northern Carolina, way back in the hills, in my old happy If you listen to his early recordings, it sounds like a kid trying to sound like Hank Williams. When I first came across George Jones, I didn't like him very much. He used to do that blue white lightning. White lightning. Somewhere along the way, he developed his own style, and it was something that hadn't really been heard before. As he got older, he got better and better and better. Walk through this world with me. Go where I go. Nobody can move them, slide them things around like old George Jones. George makes me self-conscious. He sings too good. <laughs> he's not a studied singer. He, you know, God forbid he should ever warm up before, you know, he starts singing. He just doesn't have any idea how, how good he is. I look for you. He could take the words out of your heart and sing them back to you. He likes a simple song with just a few words, and he goes for the gut immediately. Come take my hand and walk through this world. George's life really started catching up with his songs when he moved to Nashville in 1968 and met country queen Tammy Wynette. When he married Tammy Wynette, it was like a country dream. Do you, Tammy, take this man, George, to be your lawfully wedded husband? Tammy loved George Jones from before she ever left Alabama. She didn't think she'd ever meet George Jones, and when she met him, she met her hero. Together, till death do us part. And do you, George, take this woman, Tammy, to be your lawfully wedded wife? It seemed totally natural that they were two of the greatest country singers in the world, and they got together. You always come first. And all George and Tammy fell in love and married the following year, teaming up on stage as well as at home. You can really hear that their voices were made for each other. Once we started singing together, you know, it was it was just magic. While George continued as a star in his own right, he and Tammy also became a huge double act, hitting the road and selling out concerts across America. Backstage was almost like our second home. You know, we'd either be on a bus or someplace backstage. The relentless touring took its toll on George, and he began to rely on drink and drugs to keep going, a combination that led to some pretty rowdy behavior. I wanted to go on George Jones' bus, and I walked on the bus, and there was a bullet hole right above the driver's head in this board. And I said, what is that? It's like a hole. I said, oh, that's where George shot at the driver the other night when the <laughs> he wouldn't turn the radio down or something. And I went, whoa. With George's drinking spiralling out of control, Tammy did all she could to keep him away from the booze. Tammy Wynette confiscated the keys to his car and like, I didn't flush them down the toilet. I mean, got rid of them somehow, so he couldn't go, couldn't drive to the bar. So I looked out my window after three or four hours and I saw this little Cub Cadet, 10 horsepower, lawnmower. So I just opened up my bedroom window and crawled out and sure enough, the key was in it. It just kicked right off and I, I drove it a couple of miles. 
And then the police caught him driving his lawnmower on the freeway, trying to get to a pub to have a drink. I thought, oh, I love you. Though George's records continued to sell, his marriage to Tammy began to crumble. I did my best, I took it. Being in the newspapers and on TV was difficult, and it, it's hard to have your personal life spread out in front of everyone to read. I think that a lot of people in this country would like to believe that, you know, George and Tammy were like Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, you know, and that they were meant to be. I think we were more fascinated with each other in the music than we really were as man and wife, you know. And uh, that began to show after a while. After five years of marriage and one daughter, Tammy filed for divorce in 1974. This did nothing to help George's state of mind or his punctuality. Through tear-stained eyes, I watched her walk away. He lost from about 150 to 100 pounds. He looked like a dead man walking. They would book him, and when it came time for Jones to be there, he didn't show up. I did a whole tour with George Jones and never saw him once. <laughs> so it is no show, George. <laughs> I bought a ticket to see him in Columbia, South Carolina one time, and he never showed. I went all the way to Nashville to record um, a duet with him, and uh, Jones didn't show up. I wasn't that bad, uh, but I was bad enough. George lost all his money, his hits dried up, and hardcore country's biggest superstar found himself living in his car. And as if that wasn't bad enough. Jones was arrested last May when Brentwood police stopped him on I-65, south of Nashville, just inside the Williamson County line. What have I done? You are drunk. I, want to I am you. not. Yes, you are. No, sir. He would turn into Mr. Hyde. I mean, you know, he was just a, a totally different person. You never knew what he was going to say, what was going to get him in the mood that you didn't want to see. Hey, come on then, George. There was a phase in his cocaine madness where he had, living in his head, an old man and a duck. And the old man and the duck would actually have arguments. The old man would say, what's this damn duck doing in here? You know, and the duck say, shut up. You know, and they'd get in one hell of a fight. Imagine living with that. George, what do you want for tea? Oh, I'll ask the duck. I don't know what he's saying. He's quacking. I mean, how's that going to work? But somehow, when he entered a studio, he could get it together enough to record some of the absolute most classic vocals in the history of country music. He said, I love you till I die. She told him you forget in time. I watched the years pass slowly by. I just want to cry when I hear that song. She's it's the most brave. beautiful, melodic song. That is the greatest country song in the world. It's yep. my very favorite country song. And when I have crazy now and then. George still liked a drink or two, but 1980s He Stopped Loving Her Today brought him back to the top. He stopped loving her today. George married fourth wife Nancy, but it took something even more dramatic to straighten his life out. Country music legend George Jones remains hospitalized in critical condition in Tennessee. He was talking on a car phone when he apparently lost control of his SUV and hit the side of a concrete bridge. I lay my head on the wheel at old home begins honking the whole neighborhood know Jones is home drunk. Died in that accident when he had been sneaking drinks all along. He used to ride around out here saying, Hey, I wish I could get hit in the head with a sledgehammer and, and kind of straighten my life up. And well, you know, God made him hit something harder, I think, than a sledgehammer was that bridge out there. All his drinking don't kill me. Her Thank God George got a hold of a lady that uh, got him out of that self-destruct mode. I think she did really well with helping George uh, piece his life back together. 
My wife, Nancy, here, she serves only the best to the grandkids. George Jones, Country Sausage. You'll never have a no-show for breakfast as long as you have George Jones, Country Sausage on the table. George Jones, Country Sausage. Pure pork, no possible.